Hello, my name is Jody M. Johnson, CEO of Action Coach Business Coaching, uh, Team Sage in Miami, and your host for Business Spotlight Miami, where we interview and focus on the businesses that make Miami great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lachlan Yacuspigny, hopefully I said it correctly, the co-founder of Rivello, the largest online platform for U.S. companies to hire Latin America-based remote software developers. Welcome, Lachlan. Could you please Thanks, give us a brief description of your business? Sure. Um, Rivello is an online platform, and we help U.S. companies hire uh, faster, quicker, and cheaper remote software developers across Latin America. Uh, why Latin America? It's because we focus only on U.S. time zones. Uh, and we take care of each step of the process to make it as easy for you to hire uh, anywhere in your time zone, anywhere in the world, as it would be to hire in your home city, where you know all the ins and outs, all the sourcing and how to do payroll, salary and benefits. So we take all that admin off your hands and let you focus on just choosing the best candidates. So how long have you been in business? Um, we've been in business for a while now, about eight years, but in this current uh, in that the business that we do today, a little less than three years, it, it came from uh, a change in the market and became our principal line of business. Okay. And how many people work with you, Lachlan? Uh, just over 200 at the moment. Wow. It's a big company. And the name of your business, how did you come up with that? <laughs> yeah, so um, Ravello, uh, it does have some connection to the idea being that we reveal talent and reveal the right candidates to businesses. But if I'm going to be completely honest, it was also heavily chosen because there was uh, very little competition for that name and similar names on Google search, which these days are a very tough thing to find. Yeah, absolutely. What drove you to start the business in the first place? Um, we were in the, in the original, the original, uh, format of the business was because me and my co-founder were, we were doing our MBA in the States. And it was right in the period where tech companies were starting to take off and take over the world. So Airbnb and Uber were just surging. We visited their offices. We saw what they were doing with top quality software engineers. And it was really clear that every business in America and every business around the world was going to have to do, uh, invest heavily in software engineers in the future. We thought the technology to find the best software engineers was still very basic. And so we started to work on that. Fascinating. You know, they say even a business like mine, which you might think of professional services, is a tech company at essence, mm -hmm. right? So the quote from Simon Sinek says, you don't care what you do or how you do what you do. People care why you do what you do. So why do you do what you do? Yeah. We... We have a very strong why, and I think everyone that works at Ravello feels this very, very strongly. Both uh, sides of our marketplace, so the companies that are hiring and the candidates that are getting new jobs, get unbelievable life-changing benefits out of what we do. So, so many companies across the US are held back from growing to their full potential or doing what they want to do because they just can't get their hands on good enough talent at the price they have inside their budget. And then we looked across the rest of the world and there are sensational, brilliant people working for less than 5% of what is the market rate uh, in most of the Western world. So when you put those two together, magic happens. The companies grow much faster, deliver products faster, and the candidates get life-changing job opportunities that they just couldn't get in their home countries. Oh, wow. Making a profound difference in those communities. Uh, it really is. It's magic. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I have a couple of clients that, you know, we've been looking for you know, engineers, software engineers. I mean, then that's kind of like a limit. It's a limiting factor. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's absolutely I, a I, factor to scale. It's the biggest thing holding back American innovation is, is access to top quality software engineers. And it's just unleashing an incredible amount of progress, the fact that they can now tap into talent pools around the world. Yeah, it's beautiful. Quite a brilliant idea. Now, given your focus on tech and software development, were there any challenges or opportunities that arose during the pandemic? 
Yeah, yeah, that actually changed how our business uh, operated completely. So we knew that one day in the future, companies would shift to their uh, principal way of hiring being remote hiring. Uh, but before 2020, that wasn't the case. It was less than 2% of our business. Uh, when the pandemic hit, everybody went remote and very, very quickly companies stopped caring where their software engineers were based <laughs> and just wanted them to work in the same time zone. So our focus went, uh, our folks on the US market went from less than 2% of our business to almost 100% today. It's the vast wow. majority of what we do today because of that shift of uh, all of a sudden, every company in New York wants to hire someone in their time zone. They don't care where it is. Brazil turns out to be in the same time zone as New York. So uh, it drastically transformed how we operate. Let me ask you a question because I came up against this with a client um, some years back. Was, we, I've been at this for 17 years now. And they had remote workers in Argentina, but there were yep. labor laws in Argentina that are very different from labor laws in the US. So yep. how do you navigate that? Yeah, they are. And it's, it's very complex to find that out across every country you operate in. We have deep legal, legal expertise in every country in Latin America. I've spent an ungodly amount on lawyers to make sure that we protect all of our clients and ourselves and do everything by the book. What we do is we take all of that off our client's plate and our clients just deal with another US entity. But we make sure that we're fitting into the local labor laws, paying the local tax and doing everything right on the back end. Oh, that's great. That's great. Because I was thinking to myself, wow, that, that could be an issue. But you've taken all Absolutely. of that concern away. Exactly. So our clients just see one US entity and we deal with the rest. Brilliant. So then let me ask you, who's an ideal client for you? We mostly deal with companies that are between 50 and 1,000 employees, and they're often tech-driven companies, or they're companies that were a little bit more traditional and are now investing more and more in their technology uh, services. And so that um, uh, fast-moving yet still decent-sized mid-market company is, is uh, what most of our clients look like. Okay, good. And so what would you say is your business biggest business challenge and what's ahead in the next few years? Yeah, I think the biggest business challenge is always making sure that we get the matches right. So there is more and more technology that we can use and leverage to make sure that the right person is dealing with the right company. Because what companies and candidates both want is for each candidate to be able to grow their career and develop their career at a new company that they join. What you want to try and avoid are candidates that enter a company and one year later move to a new company and one year later move to a new company. And what that means is you didn't match them up, right? Um, mm. It's not right for both sides. So using more and more tech to do that at a more and more intricate way uh, is what we're most focused on. And for the next few years, I think it's obvious. Some of these new tools around AI and some of these new tools around uh, language processing mean that you can really accelerate better matching uh, by leveraging some of the new technology that's coming out. Can you give an example? Yeah. Um, there's a part of every in-person interview where I think anyone that's ever hired would say it's pretty standardized. There's a set set of questions and there's a set set of answers. Um, however, it doesn't translate to uh, the written word. You wouldn't be able to do it over email. What it does translate to is you can do video interviews at large scale, and you can then have technology analyze the response and better match those interview responses with what clients are looking for. Um, that Doing that at scale in a way that's still somewhat humane really wasn't possible a few years ago, but it is now. Do you use any kind of profiling tools in your interviewing and matching with candidates and companies? You know, like you it's probably less, have heard in college, like Myers-Briggs or DISC or any of Profile XT, any of those kinds of things? A little bit less that sort of profile because the challenge is that every client is looking for something different and even teams within a client are looking something, for something different. Um, if you were to think about, let's think about an enormous company, say Citigroup, they have a thousand different teams inside and each one of them wants a different type of personality and they often struggle very much to 
communicate what that personality choice is. Um, but you are able to find it out through uh, a series of um, process steps that we put in place. And you said that you do a group, do you do group interviews? No, no, we have can candidates that interview by themselves in their own house, but they're talking to uh, video, it's video recorded interviews. Oh, video recorded, okay. Yeah. Very, very interesting. What's inspiring you most today? Look, the same, the most inspiring part of my job is, is always the same. It's when you see a new candidate get uh, a new job at a company that the reaction from both sides is amazing. The, the <laughs> company gets excited. And I mean, we got an email from a candidate who said I was struggling to pay my for my kids' school. But thanks to the job I got through you guys, we just bought our first house. I mean, this is, it's super right. inspiring stuff to be able to work on. Yeah. What's been the most significant thing you've learned since you started your business? I think in a business, um, the business front, uh, it's the importance of distribution and marketing. Uh, the best phrase I've heard that sums it up is first time founders think about product, second time founders think about distribution. Uh, it doesn't matter how good your product or your service is. If nobody hears about it and nobody knows about it, uh, it doesn't do you any good. And so I think the most important thing I've learned is how much we should have much earlier on started on getting the word out and publicity and telling people about mm -hmm. what we have. Mm -hmm. The reaction when they use us is amazing, but we still need to uh, let more people know about our product. Now you've had an accomplishment in your company getting series B funding. So what are you going to do with that money? How are you going to scale your business? <laughs> work on distribution and marketing and improving and go. professionalizing that area. Oh, excellent. All right. So as we wrap up the interview, is there anything else that you want to share? Uh, no, look, I think it's just um, a very exciting time for our industry. I think we've all seen the uh, massive amount of tech layoffs over the past few months, but uh, What's kept me most excited and most optimistic and positive about the future is that the technology industry has soaked up and re-employed and put a lot of those people back to work on new and interesting things. So I'm just as excited and optimistic about the industry in the next five years as I have been over the last five years. <laughs> Very beautifully said. So thank you so much for your time, Lachlan and for the difference that you're making both for your clients and for those candidates that, that get work. And you can learn more about Ravello at Ravello.com. Yes, he's got a great website, it's very explanatory. And with that, it's the close of our interview. Thank you, Lachlan. Business Spotlight Thanks, Miami. Lachlan. Interviewing business owners that make Miami great. <laughs>